This was the defining series. By the way, of, oh, go can ahead. I say something? Oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Next time Jason <laughs> call me Ozzy Gienov's son, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I got to drive to Guarantee Field, and I say, Jason, not Ozzy Gien, son. Son. Uh, is there a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, do we, we, have, do we have any fun. do we have any proof that you are related? Have We've, you adopted him? I'm Venezuelan. Has he adopted and you? I'm, we are Venezuelan and we can make anything around in the United States. We might not in Venezuela say yes, you are the okay. father. <laughs> so is it is it is it Jason Guillen or is it Ozzy Benetti? Ozzy Benetti. Ozzy Benetti. Yeah. Ozzy Benetti. Ozzy, Ozzy you've, Benetti. You're changing your name to Ozzy, Ozzy Benetti. Benetti. Yes. Yes. I say uh, Jason Benetti. Ozzy, again, you are the father. <laughs> hey, look, you're going to have to get these changed. That, that's a, yeah, it's no, OG. no, that's all, 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 all Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> well, meanwhile, uh, there was no, this uh, about uh, the baseball game that did happen. Uh, <laughs> defining series of the season. A defining series that defined who the White Sox are in 2022 and who the Guardians are. We saw it all out there in these three games. The White Sox needed to sweep the Guardians. And what happens? The Guardians sweep the White Sox. Yeah, and I was so looking forward to coming to Chicago and looking forward to this Guardians series, and it didn't unfold how I thought. I, I thought they were going to put up a fight. I really did. I thought they were going to show up. I thought they were going to play some exciting baseball. And this home stretch was, was going to be exciting, and it was going to come down to the last week of the season. It didn't unfold that way. And uh, in Cleveland, uh, they showed up and oh, big they, time. they are. They sent a message. They're playing as good a baseball right now as they've played all season long. And the gap between where the White Sox are right now and where the Guardians are right now is it, big. There's yes. a big gap there. Yeah. What we can say, because I was the biggest cheerleader. Yeah. And you told me five months ago yeah. about this. Moment, it will happen. Uh, I warned you what was lying ahead if the White Sox did not improve. And this all team would be waiting for them in September if the Sox did not win a bunch of these games in oh May, June, July. No, it's August. just it's just off the field. I call it off yeah, the yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. You told me every night, Ozzy, I, and I like, come yeah. on, Chuck. You know who I am, Ozzy Guillen, Ozzy Guillen, and you say, well, you will see. And tonight, I had to agree with you. Not tonight, last night. Yeah. Uh, in the pregame show, I agree with you. The reason I'm sitting here with you is just because I don't know anything about baseball. No. My, you were believing in the White Sox. Yes, turning my belief around. was so. But by the way, I told my, I never bet. I told you that. Yeah, yeah. I never bet ever. And any bet golf balls. Yes. Yeah. Just for fun. Yeah, with your but family. I never bet family. money. Right. And a double up before they come to Cleveland. And my son only go, you know that? You're an idiot. He put like clown picture. You're a clown. I say, why? You, you sure? I said, okay. I hope my mom don't find this because you're going to say I'm married with a stupid man. Yeah. I said, yes, because I still believe that. Mm -hmm. I, when they come in town, I still believe that. But we, we've been waiting all yeah. season for, for them to, and, and even. Even this, Tonight. With two weeks late, we're waiting. Like, here we go. We all kind of believed and thought that they had a run in them. We have a lot to get to on the show. <laughs> I've got, like, notes and notes and thoughts and feelings and emotions. My head's going to explode. If I feel this way, Salty Chuck might be next. Salty Chuck. Yeah, you're going to... The poor dog. These are, these are Ozzy's favorite shows. Hey, by the way, the Salty poor dog is going to pee out. in the basement. <laughs> you're not going to take him out tomorrow. <laughs> My dog is going to pee in the basement because I'm not going to take him out because tomorrow because he's so salty. Okay. Subaru White Sox Plus Game Live next. Cleveland Guardians come to town, and they sent quite a message to the defending champs of the American League Central. They swept the White Sox in three games, doing the little things, the big things, all the things that have the Guardians on the way to a shocking division title. Shocking when you consider that... They were expected to win, what, 70 games this year. The White Sox uh, will hopefully finish second. Sounds like it, but they're not going to win the division because this thing is over. It is Super White Sox Post Game Live here with the legend Ozzy Guillen and World Series hero Scott Pacetnik. I'm Chuck Garfine. This is the youngest team. It's salty. Here you go. 
Det är länge sedan. 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 Det är l But when you have ever played making seven thousand million dollars and you have a team, it's just like very quietly. Mm -hmm. Punch the bus, uh, uh, ticket bus or bus ticket, ticket bus. Yeah, yeah. When you're in the bus, bus ticket, yeah. CTA, yeah. cheers, and they go to play. Yeah. And you go to the limousine like, hey, take me to Dyer Stadium. That's <laughs> different. Yes, that's different. Yeah. This is uh, a team that is, as I said, youngest team in baseball. They faced what the White Sox gave was thought to be their best. Cease, Lynn, Cueto. Coppins. No wins. No, 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 I'm talking oh, about like they won in the this series. Like, I mean, the yes. White Sox sent their best pitchers out. Obviously, the Guardians had their best pitchers, too, but the Sox couldn't, uh, couldn't get one win off of them. Lo and lopsided. Yeah. Lopsided. Wasn't even close. The, uh, fundamentally, the Guardians are just so much better than the White Sox right now. But yeah. in not just fundamentally, pretty much every as asset or facet of the game, base running, pitching, bullpen, everything, spirit, energy, mm -hmm. the way they play. Um, it, it was lopsided. It's not a series we wanted to see. No. Uh, with, the, with the season on the line. Right. Uh, here's this quote from Austin Hedges, catcher for the Guardians. He said this after the win last night. We talked about it on the pregame show, and it really resonates with me because we were thinking, like, well, who, do, who are the White Sox? We've been trying to – how how many times on this show have we been trying to figure out who the White Sox are this year? What is their identity? Well, we're what, lying. What is their identity? Were we lying? Oh, I know. We lie or we were wrong. Like, oh, uh, that'd be okay. We are – we believe everything yeah. that they, he was wrong. All right. Did you hear this coming from the White Sox clubhouse at all in any way this year? This is what Austin had just said last night. He said about this series, we don't rise to the occasion because the occasion is every day. The occasion is every day. I want to play on that team. I want the, I, I mean, I want this show to be like that. Every show is the occasion, not like we'll get it next week when everyone's healthy or we'll you know down the line that's the occasion no every single day this guardians team took the field because it was the occasion and we saw that from them all three games here tonight but it was nothing new for them because they've been doing it all season that's the funny thing about it they come from somebody it's okay you catch it you not come from ramirez mm -hmm. he doesn't have to okay you not come from the big he come from the guy he just humble Catch the ball, throw the ball, and not a superstar. That gets you more. That is like the one thing about it. We keep saying and saying it is a sad situation, very tough situation for the White Sox when those guys talk like that. Yeah. You know why? This year, this ball club is going to be good for long, I'll put it five times, five years, four years, before free agents. You're talking about White Sox or the Guardians? The White who? The White Sox, the Guardian, yeah. going to be good for free agents year. Yeah, until these guys become free agents. Free agents. Yeah. Well, okay. Because they're Whatever young. reason, no, yeah. what they do different. They got a good ball club. Mm -hmm. Good team. A good team yeah. for a little while. I call it professional. Yeah. They show up to the ballpark and give their all regardless of the circumstances, day in and day out. That's a professional. And they have embodied that. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting here on the set with a uh, couple guys who know something about scoring in the first inning. So in 2005, and by the way, we're going to talk about 2004 in a minute because I think that's going to wrap around with what's going on with this team. 2005, you're on the team. You score first so many times. How big, big of a luxury was it for you as a manager to have first inning runs led by I never odds? pray. I like, I, I'm managing. I'm, I get more nervous now than he was managing. I say, okay, it's going to pop. Come on, Scotty Pop. Come on, Scotty Pop. Come on, Scotty Pop. Put get on base. Okay, boys, because I know my pitchers, mm -hmm. they go there eight innings, seven innings. Scotty's still second. Oh, this one's still third. I said, here we go. I'm the great manager. I told you the sign to still third. No. Gucci, move the guy over. Move the guy over. Mm -hmm. We go by one. Okay? You know how many innings we go by one and your pitcher go? We go by one. 
Remember Freddy Garcia, I swear to God. I remember Freddy Garcia say, call me one. In game Parker. four of the World Series. Boom. How many times did they say that? Call me one, Scotty Pa. I never asked anything about Scotty. Say, get on base, everything be on. Everything gonna be on. I gotta make things happen, you gotta make things happen. Every time I leave my, my office with the line of car, I told Joey Cora, I told Harold Bain, say, my kid, Scotty Pa. Scotty Pa there, we in. That was and we hit a lot of home runs, yeah. by the way. Yes. Well, I, I don't think you can win a title doing it one way. Yes. You got to have some big home runs, but you also have to have the ability and the versatility to score runs in other ways. Yeah. I, I came over there in 05. I, it was my third year in the league. Really didn't know kind of who I was yet. Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Once I started reaching base, Aguchi doing his thing, I realized the impact I could have on that club by getting on, creating habit, and scoring first. And then I'm like, okay, that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. And that's why I bring this up. It is our Elgin Hyundai Home of the Double Guarantee. How do the Guardians get on the board first? They get on board in the first inning, and it begins with this. So all the little things. Well, let's start with this. Jose Ramirez is a swinging bunt. I believe the exit velocity was 24 miles per hour. <laughs> but he gets on base. Fine. And then you have Josh Naylor advancing him to third. I mean, this is a shallow ground ball, and he's in third base easily. I hate, I hate that. But the best one, man, I love it. I hate that because they did it. My God. Well, we could talk about the team later on. Yeah, we are. And then how about this perfectly executed? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Who's expecting a bunt there? First and third, two outs. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. If you lay down. To all the people that don't like it. the bunts. I love it. Look, if, you, if you have a team that has speed and knows how to bunt, that's what happens. So third inning, Rosario's on first. Cueto makes an error. Rosario, look at this guy racing. I mean, I probably couldn't have gotten to third, honestly, on this play. But he's sprinting to third. These guys run the bases this way. And here's what I love about Jose Ramirez, who is batting next. Their team some hitters might be like, you know what, I got a guy on third, I'm still going to try and hit a home run. Or I'm going to do this. No, Jose Ramirez, he's going to get the run in. Anyhow, like anyway, if that's all it takes, then fine. Okay, I got a little uh, sack fly. Unselfish baseball. I know, I'm, you know what, I, I get frustrating when I see that, but when I was player, coach, or manager, that's the team I want to see. It's just excited. My God, you have to get excited about they kick or butt. They did. And, you know, I'm, not upset. I'm happy to see, and I'm happy to beat the White Sox, but I'm happy to see a baseball team in 2022 when everything is a home run, yeah. pigeon yes. run, uh, do this, do that. A bunch of people there, they don't never play the game. They tell people how to hit, yeah. how to do this. Playing that way. My kids always criticize, oh, you like that way because you was a punchy duty. You was this. No. That's the, game, that's the way you win games with the home runs. The Guardians go first to third more than any team in baseball. Is that official? Like, they really do? I, yes. I believe so, yes. <laughs> so, at least I got the White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's the thing that I want to get to, and this is why this is so important. So last week when they faced the Guardians, the White Sox, uh, the, the pitcher on the mound for Cleveland was a the guy they brought over from AAA. Who? Yeah, uh, Hunter, what no. was his name? Power. Hunter Gaddis. Hunter Gaddis. Power. All right. On a game like that, in a game like that, swing away, White Sox hit five home runs. That's great. But when you face a guy like Shane Bieber, you're probably not going to get five home runs. They did hit three home runs in one game earlier this year against him, but that's an outlying situation. So on a night like tonight, you got to manufacture runs. What do the White Sox do in this situation? Well, let's show you this. Go to the videotape. It's the bottom of the third inning. Romy Gonzalez is on first base. Can they get from first to third? Here's a hit by... Elvis Andrews, and it looks like Jimenez maybe deked him at second base and prevented him from getting to third? Yeah, it, it was a heads-up play by Jimenez here. Look, Romy's watching him. He thinks it's a double play, so he's like, he's confused, doesn't know what to do. I'm not sure if this was a call. Oh, he did peek in. Yeah. At first, I thought it was a straight steal, or at first, I thought it was a hit and run, but right. then I, I I didn't think he peeked in. On a hit and run, you got to look in. And then but, uh, here's the bunt attempt. Not exactly executed. They never bunt. I mean, that's a bad swing. They never bunt. They just, when you can bunt, when you bunt, and now we see this a lot. Yeah. 
So, so you got two guys on first and second, nobody out. You're like, okay, yeah. this should be the yeah. start of something, and nothing came of it. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about Josh Naylor. Um, Elvis Andrews, I think, very innocently said something inside the White Sox clubhouse about a week ago that has been bulletin board material with the Cleveland Guardians, and Josh Naylor took that quote and made that a humongous thing for the Guardians in this series. So the quote from Andrews was, talking about Cleveland, he said, he said, hey, they're playing perfect baseball. Sooner or later, the Guardians are going to crumble. Now, when he said that, I'm like, well, he said that, but yeah, because they're playing perfect baseball. What do you mean? I say this saying stuff. Well, you I said don't know, it. I don't you know that, like that. I don't know that the, the, the word crumble. Right. I said they're not going to play. I don't think they're going to play good that long. Yeah. Right. That's the same stuff. Well, crumble Different means English. crumble actually is, means they're going to lose the division. Oh, oh. They're going to crumble. Crumble. Yeah. As a junior, fall you apart. Teach me that one. Yeah, fall apart. Not just that lose. Fall apart. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, oh, I don't know that. So what happened was, on the in the first game of the series, the White Sox are down in the 11th inning when the Guardians score like five runs, and there's a shot of Josh Naylor doing this to the Sox infielder is saying talk is cheap talk is cheap and he might have been directed at Andrews so that happened fine all good I want to take it to tonight so tonight Jose Abreu gets a double and he's on second base and you'll see Abreu do this and a lot of the White Sox players will do this they'll get a hit and then they'll look in the dugout all teams have their little signals this is one thing that Jose Abreu does he looks into the dugout and does this yeah like that, the little, and they do it right back. Yeah, it's like their little signal. I don't know what it means, but whatever. Josh Naylor, later in the game, hits a double. He gets to second base, and what does he do when he arrives there and looks back at his dugout? He's mocking them. And look at the dugout. Look at the dugout's reaction to this. Oh, it didn't show it. Well, they were all laughing at him. So. Surprise me. Abreu do that. Mm -hmm. Surprise me that. That surprise Abreu. That Abreu does that. Yeah, like. Well, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. No, when you're done. No, when you're done, like, you know, you're not going to make the playoff. Oh, like, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, I like, see what you're saying. please, you guys done. I remember managing the Marlins and uh, Bonifacio. We're down by 17 runs, like, every night. Mm -hmm. Bonifacio got an infield. He go. You see it? I like go, oh, oh yeah, we two hours away to be to be losing seventeen to two. You know what I mean? That's the same way. I'm surprised Abreu do that because Abreu, you know, he got it. He's his teammate. He got to do that. But Naylor was right. He was right I, in what way? About talking, talking, talking. Right. When you win games, you win games on the field without talk. Yeah, but he was mocking one of the leaders on the White Sox. That's how I interpreted it. How did you interpret well, it? Well, whether he's talking about the comments Elvis made yeah. or just copying what Abreu did, that makes sense because this Guardian team came into town with a little something extra, it yeah. seemed like. Mm -hmm. They were motive something motivated them, and they rose, well, you know, it wasn't rising to the occasion. They do it every day, but yeah. they came to play. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it was the comments Elvis made or what, or some other stuff going behind the scenes that we don't know about, but they were motivated, motivated by something. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hear from Miguel Cairo. It's brought to you by Comcast Business Beyond Fast. Here is uh, Cairo. Donnie's first start in 11 days. What did you see from him? What did you like from him tonight? He, he, he battled in there. He went and competed. You know, they got a few ground balls that they went through the, the infield and you know, after two out, we got a little, little ground ball right in the grass from Ramirez. After two out, that that's where everything starts. So, but he he pitched really good, and he he told me that he was feeling good. Uh, after the in the 16, he, I was like, he was a, hey, I start feeling it, and I understand that, you know. But to come up and and pitch after being sick, that was, he's a competitor. Yeah, you came fought to put yourself in position to do something in this series. What's the level of disappointment now that it's been complete and they've swept I, you guys? I'm going to tell you, you know, 
since I think, uh, I believe it was August 31st, they decide to, to, to play, they decide to battle, they went in and did everything. And, you know, I'm proud. I'm proud of what they've been doing. You know, just because we lost this series, if you look back from August 31st to we won, what, six series? And they, they fought. They, they give everything. And, you know, we just f- fell short to, to a really good team. That team is really good. They know how to p- they, they know how to pitch. They play defense, and they know how to put the barrel on the ball. And you got to play clean, and you got to take advantage of all the chances that they give you. And it's not too many. People was attending to the eight, and, but we fought back. We scored two, and, you know, we were there. So They're a young team, but they seem to have answered in that team. They have answered the challenge from both you guys and the Twins. There. Yes, they, they've they been playing good. And they've been playing good for, I think, I don't know how long, but they've been playing good. And it was a tough ta- task. And But our players, they fought too. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. We got to move on. And tomorrow is a Detroit's coming in town. And we got to go out there and, and play hard. How do you think it took until that time, August 31st, to get that level of your focus or commitment as you were talking about? I just, I, you know, like we got a lot of people hurt. Like I said earlier before, a lot of pitchers hurt, a lot of position players hurt. And that's when we start getting all the, you know, bummer. We got all the pitchers back and, you know, we got links that he got the surgery in his knee. He was pitching a little, you know, with pain and he got better. And you saw, you know, you saw what he can do when he's healthy. So. Did you see that? Just, you know, all those injuries really affect the the mental aspect of the game for the guys who weren't hurt. Of course, you know when when we lost Hendricks, and you had to put Graveman to be the closer. Now you are losing your setup man, so someone else has got to step up. And it was like that. So it took a lot of task on, on the player, on the pitching, and when you you saw what you can what we can do when we were healthy, and that's something that. You know, I'm proud. I'm proud of the players that, that we have, and they've they've been fighting, and it's still two more weeks, so it's not over yet. You got the one early and the one late. Just what made Bieber such a challenge tonight again? Bieber, I'm telling you, he's he's ascending. He knows how to throw his fastball, his cutter, the curveball. Keep he keep you out of balance, and he attack the strike zone. He make you, he make you, he make you swing. And sometimes, as you said, look in the same tunnel right there, going down, middle weight, and he knows how to pitch. He's a really good pitcher. Made it tough on uh, the White Sox here tonight. What are your thoughts right now? Beaver? Well, just We know uh, what I say in the show is like this. Yeah. It's hard for me to do and make that. That's You're saying that you said on the pregame show that Sox are probably going to get swept. Yes, I know it will. they will. Mm-hmm. Because I think they're going to tell Bieber, say, oh, we got two in a row. Let me see what you have. Boop. And, oh. <sighs> <laughs> big sigh from the Azar roof. Uh, I want to talk about this because, oh, that's another big, you're just breathing over there. No, because Are you people, meditating? People told me when you're going to say something stupid, just. <sighs> okay. Okay, you're better now. Uh, I want to bring this up, and that is that we don't know where this season is going to end, how many wins they're going to have. For all we know, they're going to f- win out. You never know. I'm just putting that little thing out there. Um, changes probably are coming. You don't know what the changes are going to be. This season, to me, feels a lot like the 2004 White Sox. And it's not completely similar, but... You were managing that team. That was your first year. There was a lot of talent on that team, wasn't there? More talent than people thought. Yes. Unbelievable talent. Right. And you guys won 83 games. We, we don't have a good team. You didn't have a good well, team. Well, in 2004, Maglo got hurt and big hurt. Right. He got triple hurt. Yes. But you said something to Kenny about what it's going to take for them to win. Can you share some of that on the air here? No, I, I, I was just talking and said, hey, we have... Yeah, Kenny put an unbelievable thing on the field. Mm-hmm. It's no doubt. You see the thing on the field, like, wow. Why did this guy finish second against Minnesota every year? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, we got a great ball club, great ball club, great ball club. But then we don't have a great team. And I remember Kenny said, you think it's easy to make trades. Mm-hmm. 
I said, no, no, I'm just telling you how I feel about this ball club. Kenny, he put a miracle. Like, psh, like, okay, let me see what I can do. Yeah. And he do the right thing, like boom, boom, no power defense, a little bit. Yeah, he made one move, uh, acquiring a guy who's uh, How about out this one? With us. They have a, <laughs> you <laughs> tell me, uh, this is the best one. We trade Carlos Lee for Scapo Seni. I'm in Venezuela. In the beach house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just hanging out at the beach house in Venezuela. I go, can't wait to see this reaction. What? <laughs> I'm going to taste my key. Who's Capo Seni? <laughs> when I see this skinny guy, I go, oh, I don't boy, Kenny. Thank you. You make the move to make me happy, but this is not the guy we should have. <laughs> well, I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. I was wrong. I was very wrong. But I did. My first reaction was, hey, no, Kenny can, he can talk to me because I was in the middle of the water. Yeah. Then I come back to my beach. I said, go, the White Sox, Drake, couple Senny for Carlos Ligo. <laughs> 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 okay. You, you were in Venezuela. I was in Japan. Japan. Japan on some appearance, this three day appearance. And my phone rings in the hotel. Didn't answer. Phone rings again. I'm like, somebody's trying to get in touch with yeah. me. And uh, I found out you've been, you're going to the White Sox. And I knew nothing about the White Sox. I'm like, oh, White Sox. Yeah. And one year later, one year one later, year later, World Series hero.